sources. Sorry, four. Uh, I think four. <laughs> four different sources. The first one is uh, the, the paper that uh, Emma Bobby has circulated. It's uh, something on SourceForge called Quality Criteria for Linked Data Sources. And this was the primary uh, uh, source. So there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, it's very, very good, very good quality, very well organized. Then the second one, I didn't put a, a, a real source, but it comes from the, the, uh, the literature on statistical quality control. I think, Luciana, actually, you are familiar with this. Because at one point we wrote a proposal that had something related to statistical quality control. I didn't put any references here because you know this is widespread. Uh, but like, uh, there's there's a bunch of different uh, uh, things. Actually, Jatin and I, uh, you know, at one point we also used statistical quality control for a proposal. Uh, using a very large database, uh, but the guy didn't want to do it, so you know we never really f moved forward. Then uh, there is, let's see, uh, there's w uh, uh, two sections here, and I'm I'm just realizing now that I didn't put a, a link to this. Maybe I can even go ahead and put now, which are the pragmatic and the social uh, criteria. This actually comes from up one. The, the the ontology engineering thing. So if you if you want to do this later, you can actually just let me see. I think I uploaded up one somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. And I'll place the link right now. Here we go. So I have uh, a public link. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, place a hyperlink for the social and the pragmatic. So then, anyway, so now you know where this is coming from. And then the very final one. Okay, done. Uh, and then the final one, the one about reuse, actually comes from research objects. Now, the, in the open issues, uh, both of them actually come from, from research objects. Research objects, uh, the hyperlink is there, is a link that, uh, to a paper that Emma uh, Pali uh, sent to me. It's an extremely good paper uh, called Why Link Data is Not Enough for Science at this. Now, what's very interesting about this paper to me is that uh, it completely aligns with a proposal that Jatina and I have submitted uh, to, uh, with an oncology group from Harvard. Uh, actually, Clarissa is connected to that group, so she's taking part of something related to W3C. I don't know if you guys remember this, but she started, like, you know, uh, taking part of some, uh, you know, regular meetings from W3C, uh, and this was through the, the, the Harvard group. Anyway, so it, for this project, our group uh, didn't really do anything in terms of oncology. Uh, they took the, 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 the role. That's why, like, for example, uh, Amar Pali, you didn't get involved, or Clarissa didn't get involved. You know, this was basically coming from them. Uh, but uh, that proposal, uh, which is a proposal focusing on something, the development of a, a database, further development of a database called DVM Health, uh, the entire proposal is focused on the use of ontology, ontologies uh, for the issue of uh, reproducibility, okay? So I'll, I'll get back, you know, we're gonna come back here and then I'll explain a little bit, you know, exactly what this means. So anyway, so um, let's just go over the end, uh, you know, each one of these points, uh, but now you know, you know, the four sources that this is coming from. Before I even go over this, I, I would just like to say one thing. Uh, but finally, I don't know who the person, I, I think you mentioned that uh, it was a girl who 
who uh, had put together this quality criteria for the main data sources. I don't know, for some reason I had this impression um, that she was a student. Yeah, somebody. that's right. There is a, there is one um, person called Olaf Hartish. He's from the Berlin University and this girl is doing her uh, master's uh, thesis with this person on linked data quality. Um, I think uh, just one moment I can look it up. It's it's a university in Berlin. Oh, Berlin. Okay, yeah. Good. Now, one thing I'm about, and I, I, again, I don't know, you know, how much, I, I'm just brainstorming here, okay? So take this very lightly. Yeah. I, I see, you know, two things that could be of potential interest, potentially to us here. One of them would be potentially to augment what she has done with some of the criteria that we took from other sources. Okay. It, it, I don't know if you remember, but you know, the first time I looked at this, I, I, I was already reading uh, some, some other things in terms of data quality for linked open data. Yeah. And my first reaction was like, well, this is really good, but it's also incomplete. Yeah. Uh, I think what we have in the, 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 the presentation right now is a more complete version of uh, a data quality. It doesn't mean that, you know, for every effort in terms of data quality, you know, uh, everybody should do everything. Uh, but mm. if she's putting together a document that's supposed to be comprehensive, she might be interested in incorporating a few other things. Right. And maybe, you know, we could help her out. Yeah. Again, just a thought. Uh, the second thing that came to mind is this Amrapali. Uh, I think like, uh, uh, you know, with the, the incorporation of uh, like, you know, patent data and the World Bank data yeah. into the RED project, just to make sure, Luciana, you know what the RED project is? Luciana? Sorry, yes, I, I have some idea. Yeah, so uh, later on, you know, maybe our party, you could just send this to Luciana. Okay. Uh, so basically, the RED project, in my opinion, is one of the most fascinating projects. I, and, and I'm not talking just about ontologies. Uh, you know, overall, that I have ever been involved with, like, I, I have never seen anything with so much potential. Uh, and I, I'm thinking now, Rapali, in terms of, uh, you know, if we start kind of like, you know, mapping uh, the future of the RED project in terms of publications, I see at least, you know, two, two potential paths that could generate a lot of publications. And I, I'm talking about, you know, really high quality publications. Yeah. So the, the two ways of doing this would be, number one, like all the different uh, uh, research questions from a, uh, a research policy perspective and healthcare policy perspective, yeah. that or economic. So I'm, I'm talking about you know content-oriented uh, uh, questions, okay? Yeah. Uh, things like uh, okay, is there disparity? Okay. But then on the on the the link data uh, 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 side of things, I don't know. I think that you know the the, the potential within red to have not one or two, but, you know, multiple uh, publications on the issue of data quality uh -huh. for linked open data, it's just huge. Yeah. It's just absolutely huge. And, and I think that, uh, you know, potentially a, a, an initial paper where we would take some of these criteria mm -hmm. that are now listed in this, uh, 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 you know, Google presentation, yeah. uh, and just taking some of the the, 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 the the data within RED. So, you know, basically the idea is taking RED as a springboard and then applying some of the, these criteria and looking at uh, how the data within RED uh, actually, uh, you know, how they fare in relation to these criteria. And then later on, Amrapali, working with the data sources, trying to improve the data quality. Right. Uh, because, yeah. you know, I, I think that, you know, what, what's going to be clear, hopefully, you know, by the end of this uh, presentation today, is that uh, this student from Berlin, again, she did a wonderful job. Yeah. But she really focused on some issues that are specific 
uh, to ontology engineering, okay. which I think is great. But then in the additional three sources that uh, you know I added to this uh, 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 to this PowerPoint presentation, and again I didn't come up with them. You know they were done by other people. Okay. But I think that these other sources they bring in a different dimension. A dimension in terms of uh, you know the social dimension, the pragmatic dimension, right. uh, the dimension of uh, you know whether the data is actually providing uh, uh, information that's actually true in the sense true in the sense of the the, 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 the domain, the target domain. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, just, so for now, this is just food for thought. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So thinking in terms of the future of red, because I. I and, and I'm going to finally make absolutely no mistake with these two paths. Uh, I think, like, again, the, the data quality path yeah. and the, the, the path on, uh, you know, answering specific content uh, uh, research questions. Yeah. Like, you know, this amplifies dramatically the portfolio in terms of possibilities, in terms of funding. Okay. And I'm not talking just about European funding, I'm talking about U.S. funding. Okay. And that means like you know, an entire research career, uh, publications, you know, I'm talking about something really big and really huge. So yeah. I, think the, I think this thing is just absolutely amazing. Anyway, yeah. So that, that, that's just for starters. So let's yeah. go over the, the, you know, the, the slides themselves. Okay. So uh, you know, if, you, if you guys are following, I'm now on slide number three which is a slide about content. Uh, so basically, the student from Berlin, uh, and again, each one of the, the headings here, you know, they, they have uh, 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 hyperlinks whenever possible to the specific, um, to the specific uh, uh, section of the document. So what, what she calls content, uh, it's pretty much, you know, what I would call, uh, you know, the hardcore ontology engineering in terms of the the, the syntax primarily. Uh, well, at least for consistency. So, you know, she has things like, for example, no definition of entities as being members of these joint classes, which is like, you know, probably something that, you know, a parser would pick. Uh, so valid usage of inverse functional uh, properties. No redefinition of the existing properties. So some of these things are things that you know something like uh, uh, you know a, a regular parser would be, uh, and you would be able to debug in a way the the ontology. Then she has uh, other things like timeliness, uh, stating the most recent validation of the data as well as the frequency. Uh, of the validation, on inclusion of outdated data. This thing is actually interesting, uh, but I, it, it wasn't entirely clear to me, and you know, perhaps we could clarify this uh, if we end up talking with her uh, about what she's talking, you know, it's unclear to me uh, uh, whether she's talking about either documenting within the ontology about the different versions versus uh, actually uh, just simply using the latest data, okay? Now, of course, you know, using the latest data is very important, but I don't think this is the most important thing. Uh, I think that, you know, Again, I don't know to which extent you know linked open data has evolved uh, to this uh, uh, at this point in relation to this. But for example, uh, uh, I, this document was in Portuguese, so I don't know if uh, uh, I finally had an opportunity to read this. But one of the the, the masters or PhD students uh, from uh, Brazil, working with uh, natural language processing. Uh, one of his, one of the ontologies he created to instantiate uh, with the product from uh, uh, natural language processing, it had some time classes so that it would allow him uh, to track how the instances, you know, were evolving over time. So what I am saying here, and I, you know, I, I, I would be extremely interested in asking this student whether, you know, what exactly does she have in mind? I think there are two completely, well, complementary things here that I think need to be classified, uh, that need to be specified. So mm -hmm. let, let me give an example, uh, for example, for Wikipedia, okay? 
if by uh, uh, including uh, you know the most recent data, what she has in mind is that, for example, if you go to the Wikipedia site uh, for the city of Leipzig, okay, and you find that it has, I have absolutely no idea how many uh, people live there, but let's say it's something like uh, whatever, you know, one million people. I'm just guessing. Okay? I have no idea. If it's one million people. And then in 2011, uh, you know, those numbers are updated to something like uh, uh, 1 million and 100,000 people. It's not that the previous version was wrong. And it's not that the 1 million instance is useless. It's very useful. But it has to be tagged with a time uh, attribute. Uh, you know, it depends on how you, you would structure the the the, uh, uh, the, the data set. Again, I, for example, I don't know how SCOS or SCOS actually tags time, uh, but it should ideally be tagged so that the data for the year 2010 remains as one minute, and then the data for the the, the 2011 or the specific date uh, when this. Uh, 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 this uh, 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 new uh, piece of data came came on board, uh, then it's going to be tagged for you know uh, one million and one hundred thousand. Uh, another example of this occurred in a meeting yesterday with the CRI group. So the, the CRI groups, just to get you situated, is the clinical research uh, uh, informatics group. It's the group led by Brian McCourt which is an absolutely amazing group. These guys are doing some fantastic work. And yesterday, they were telling something extremely interesting that they are doing with uh, uh, the clinical trials of drop data, uh, which is to time tag some of the, the differences that occurred uh, within uh, uh, the clinical trials of drop over time. So there were modifications. Sorry, I think they were, they were doing this for MESH. Okay, which is the basis of uh, uh, clinical trials.gov. So basically, they said that there was something like you know 25 different versions of MeSH, mm -hmm. and within their data, uh, they had uh, you know each one of those different versions. Now, this is absolutely outstanding because uh, that allows for a lot of reproducibility. It allows you to go back in time and track exactly. Okay. What did the data look like at this specific time point? And then, uh, you know, that would allow you to uh, do something very interesting, which is linking the data with itself. And what I mean here is, for example, let's uh, assume, just for the sake of example, that a given definition within a database uh, uh, changes over time, okay? Uh, and uh, you know these changes, they might or not be uh, uh, back compatible. Okay, so uh, uh, so for example, you know one uh, uh, back compatible uh, uh, database would be uh, initially, you know, I had a, a, a variable like age classified just as people over 65 and less than 65. Okay? And then later on, I decide that I want to have the actual value for age in the database. So, you know, a given number. These things are back compatible because, you know, it's easy to go from one to the other, uh, or at least from the, uh, from the continuous to the categorical. Uh, a a non-back compatible would be whenever this transition is no longer possible. Now, if you have time tags uh, within your linked open data, that would allow you not only to link one data set, one ontology with another ontology, but also to, 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 to link uh, one ontology with the previous versions of that same ontology. So anyway, there, there are multiple you know, use cases that we have here, uh, and it wasn't entirely clear to me what this student from Berlin, uh, what she actually meant, uh, but you know, this was fascinating. Any comments on this timeline thing here? Uh, based on your interpretation? Um, based on what she she's written in the document, I think she means that she means both the things. One is to um, update the data because she says that timeliness is part of correctness of the data as outdated data might meanwhile have become invalid. 
So I think she means that uh, you should update the data plus the date of the last update or modification should be added. So I think she means you also update the data that is um, replace it with the new data and also record when this was done. So you have the version okay. thing. That's what I think. But, but, you, but, but do, do you understand, you know, what I, what I mentioned before? Yeah. Of, it's one thing to just replace the data, which, of course, you know, it's that valuable. You know, you want to have the, the latest possible data set. But there's something else that's more sophisticated that I think would be the next level, which is something similar to what, uh, you know, Brian's group is doing, the CRI group is doing, which is not only to have the latest version, but you have the entire history of the database yeah. within the ontology. Right. Uh, and again, I can see a number of different use cases where this would, you know, be of potential use. So, mm. anyway, I, you know, I'll, 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 I actually invited them to join the meeting today. Yeah. But I think several of them were, 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 were busy. I'll, I'll, I'll see whether, you know, some, some of them can join, uh, you know, at, at some point. And maybe even make a presentation to us about what they are doing. Because, you know, what they are doing is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Um, anyway. Okay. okay. Then the, the third concept within content is verifiability. Uh, so basic provenance of information. And I think that here, you know, what she means is uh, somewhat aligned, but not completely. Uh, uh, it doesn't have all the components of what later we're going to be calling reuse. Okay, so there's some overlap, uh, but I, I think she's definitely in the right direction. Uh, but then, in the paper about reuse, the paper about research object, you know, it's much more, uh, it's much more detailed. When we get to reuse, I'll tell you a little bit more about where the, the information from reuse is coming from. It's actually from a concept used in biomedical informatics. Well, I don't know if it came from biomedical informatics, but it's a concept called data governance. Uh, which is widespread in biomedical uh, informatics, but we'll get there. Uh, so please interrupt me anytime you know you, you have any comments. You know, otherwise I'll, I'll, I'll just keep going. Uh, so the next slide, slide number four, uh, it's about representation. Uh, in, in representation, what she has here are primarily three components. Uh, the first one is called uniformity then versatility, and then comprehensibility. Uh, under uniformity, uh, you know, again, it's, it's, it, 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 these are a lot of things that, uh, you know, from an ontology perspective or an ontology engineering perspective, I would call a good form. So, you know, this has to do, for example, uh, you know, using capital letters for... Uh, uh, classes in lowercase letters for uh, properties or relations. Uh, using a consistent way of actually naming uh, 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 classes. In a certain way, uh, and, 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 and again, I, I don't want to make this misleading, uh, but uh, you know, even the way uh, uh, Mary Smith actually asks uh, to name classes in a certain way, this is in a way database 
and they are making this available as a relational database. Um, one of their uh, 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 justifications for doing this, which I think makes a lot of sense, is that most people in, uh, 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 in biomedical research, they have absolutely no clue what an oncology uh, 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 is, let alone what uh, you know, a Sparkle endpoint is or how to uh, you know, generate a query for a, a, from a Sparkle endpoint. So by providing the, the, the data in a relational database, I think they're also going to provide, which provide things like you know CSV and other formats. Uh, you know they're really improving access. Now, back in the day, you know when we had Lucas potentially working with us, uh, he developed this uh, uh, you know the beginnings of a, an R package, which I think it was called R Spark or something. Uh, where you can query, uh, uh, you know, some of these uh, Sparkle endpoints and generate uh, CSV on the go. Uh, unfortunately, you know, he didn't want to proceed with his uh, PhD, so the project got stopped. Uh, but you know, I, I think uh, 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 you know some of these things are very, uh, very uh, interesting. Uh, and, you know, the, the, uh, it, it would be interesting to talk with her. This is not a criticism, but you know, more of a question. You know, she, she then uh, you know puts into versatility things like you know human re uh, readable indication of a sparkle endpoint. Now, it's, it's it's a little hard for me to distinguish whether a human readable indication of a sparkle endpoint should be under versatility versus uniformity. Uh, I. I, I these things. Maybe you know what she means by versatility is more kind of a, you know making things easy to use. So more of a usability uh, point of view. Uh, so you know sometimes I got a little lost in the terminology. Now given it's very very hard to uh, you know I think she's doing a great job uh, uh, actually you know trying to get uh, all of these different characteristics under one umbrella. So I'm not criticizing her. It's just that you know I think some some of, some of, some of the choices you know maybe could be different. But I don't know if there's one right choice. Uh, then you know last uh, you know she has the idea of comprehensibility. And again, there's a little overlap with uniformity here. Uh, and so she talked about you know human readable labeling of uh, classes, properties, and entities. Uh, through the label, and I think this is so absolutely crucial, so absolutely crucial. Uh, you know, I cannot tell you how incredibly, you know, I'm not talking as, as a data user, uh, whenever, you know, there are no appropriate labels for the classes, uh, you end up, you know, knowing, having no clue whatsoever, you know, what the, the data set actually means. Uh, you know, I cannot tell you how often, you know, we got data sets, uh, where, you know, we had class names and, uh, you know, I asked for a data dictionary, meaning, you know, the name of the class and the label. And the answer I got was, well, you know, maybe if you take a look at the name of the class, it's <laughs> probably going to be intuitive. So just go, on, go ahead with this, <laughs> which is uh, tough. Uh, the latest one actually came from Brazil. Uh, 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 actually, you know, a, a something that people were thinking about, you know, applying RDF on top, which was a data set from uh, SUS. Uh, so basically the, the, the uh, this is kind of the Medicare equivalent for Brazil. Uh, and so if later, if uh, uh, Jackson uh, listens to this uh, uh, podcast, I, I think it would be, you know, he's going to understand what I mean. And then, you know, under comprehensibility, you know, she also talks, you know, a few things about uh, an exemplary Sparkle query, which, again, is absolutely fundamental, you know, put something there that actually works. Uh, because, you know, as we all know, we all learn by programming, not by principles, but by examples that we can modify and make it work to our uh, uh, purposes. Uh, then, you know, moving on to uh, uh, slide number five, uh, she has the issue of usage and under usage. Uh, she put uh, validity of documents, amount of data, and licensing. Uh, 
Um, now, again, you know, it gets, I, I got a little confused just with the terminology. So there are a few things here that, you know, at least in my mind, in a way they relate to, you know, things like consistency under content. But anyway, it, it's, a, it's just a choice of terminology. Uh, so under accessibility, uh, sorry, under accessibility, under usage, she has, under sorry, under validity of documents. Uh, she has things like, you know, no syntax errors, uh, when in fact, some of the things that I think she puts under content would generate syntax errors. Uh, exclusive usage of defined classes and properties, no usage of deprecated uh, classes and, and, and properties, uh, and usage of proper data types. Again, I think some of these things are issues that, uh, you know, a parser would catch. Uh, by determining whether it's valid or invalid syntax. But then, you know, there's some overlap with the, the, the content stuff. Uh, no usage of deprecated classes and properties. I think what she means here is like uh, deprecated uh, owl classes and properties, uh, which, you know, again, a, a, a parser would probably uh, catch. Other amount of data, um, now she starts getting into uh, some issues of, you know, uh, quantity versus quality. And of course, you know, provided that the quality is good, the more data you can have, uh, the better. And then she has a bunch of things like, uh, you know, number of triples, number of internal links, number of external links, which is essential. The more links you have, the better. Um, scope of data uh, and providing a fine level of detail. Uh, for, for the data. So basically going back to documentation. Uh, in terms of licensing, I think probably you know, the most important thing for in terms of licensing is just making sure that the license is clear. So for example, for the RED project, every time uh, uh, Rapan and I were scavenging for you know, new sources of uh, a data set, like you know, the license is absolutely essential in our decision of you know what are the next uh, 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 you know what's the next priority in terms of data sets that would be brought in uh, you know that would be RDFI so that later they, they can be uh, uh, added to the red project. Actually, just as a side comment, uh, in one of my emails to you, Amrapali, where I, I was talking about you know creating a single Google sheet with several separate sheets for. A potential databases to bring in in terms of literature, patents, uh, publications, patents, I forgot all the other uh, healthcare yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be interesting to have one column, uh, 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 for uh, license. Okay. Uh, so, you know, do they have a link for the license? And does the license allow us to actually bring the data in? Okay. Uh, so, anyway, so. So just the point here again that license is absolutely essential, uh, not only in terms of, you know, can you use the data, uh, but even before the, the data is actually RDFI, on whether should you bring the data. Because, you know, if there are restrictions uh, and you only find about them later, you're going to be wasting your time, uh, um, uh, you know, RDFI in the data and then not, not being able to do anything. Not that, you know, data that cannot be distri distributed should not be RDFI. There might be, you know, there, there might be internal value. One example, for example, is, uh, you know, what Jackson is doing with his uh, healthcare databases. Most, if not all of his uh, databases, I don't think he's going to be able to release them under a public uh, 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 link. Because, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, confidential patient, uh, confidential information there. Uh, but still, you know, it can be very valid within his institution. Uh, because then, you know, he can link with the external sources and link different databases uh, within uh, his institution. So that's about usage. And then, I think, finally, uh, from the Berlin paper, uh, the, the issues about uh, systems. So here, uh, she, she focuses on two things. Number one, accessibility, and number two, performance. Now, when it comes to accessibility, you know, she's talking about, you know, uh, uh, the URI, she's talking about, you know, accessibility of the Sparkle endpoint, 
uh, accessibility of the RDF dumps. There's a lot of engineering going on here. Um, so let me give you one example. I don't know if uh, Rapali, you were copied on this, but some time, some time ago, a Christian from Toronto, uh, he was very interested in uh, uh, the Skulls version of uh, Snowman. Do, do you remember this? Yeah, yeah, I remember. So basically then, you know, one of the, the, the professors here from Duke, his name is John Madden, and um, John Madden is gonna, going to be one of the mentors for Clarissa when yeah. she comes to Duke. He is, you know, I have a huge amount of respect for John. John knows a lot about oncology. Uh, you know, he's been working with biomedical oncologists for a long time. And then John had done an amazing work, uh, basically applying, uh, 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 I think it was Coase, uh, to, uh, to, was it Coase? Yeah, no. yeah, I think it was Coase. It, it was Coase, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it, it applies Coase to Snowman. But then, uh, you know, he created a sparkle endpoint. Uh, no, actually, sorry, I'm lying. He didn't create a sparkle endpoint. Uh, I think he, he put it in under some kind of uh, relational database oh. that could store triples. So it was kind of a, a, a relational database. Uh, so, so it was a, 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 a relational database based triple store. So it wasn't a native uh, 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 triple store. Uh, okay. It relied on some MySQL or Oracle or whatever. Okay. But then, you know, the snowman was so huge, uh, you know, no matter what we did, we just absolutely could not download the data. There was no oh. way the data could be downloaded. Uh, and I think, you know, this is a very good example in terms of uh, quality for native open data, where, like, you know, he did all the work. And, I'm, you know, knowing John, I know he did an amazing work, high quality work. But then everybody who needed uh, his work was basically unable to get it. Oh. Uh, because I don't know if, he, you know, since then, he has, uh, 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 you know, solved the issue, but, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of this, uh, 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 you know, uh, is, uh, I completely agree with her, it's, it's, it's a really important issue. And then the final point from the Berlin paper, which is performance. Now, I think, you know, when, when it comes to, uh, uh, to performance here, uh, this has to do with, uh, you know, some of the, the issues that Jackson is going to be presenting uh, in a workshop. I'm actually talking with him this coming week, and he's going to, you know, bring me up to date in relation to his uh, latest experiments with uh, Big Ao Lin. Uh, but it has, you know, a lot of the performance issue uh, has to do with, you know, what kinds of servers are actually being used and what kind of triple store are you using. Uh, and so far, from my conversations with him, uh, and again, I know a lot of people love Virtuoso, uh, <laughs> but so far, uh, you know, Big Aulian seems to be the big uh, winner uh, so far. Uh, and I think that the fact that we, as an academic institution, all of us, you know, being an academic institution, uh, and having freely available access, not only to Swift Aulian, but uh, uh, to Big Aulian, I hope you realize that. As academic institutions, we can have freely, uh, uh, free access to using a big outlet. So we can use it in any way we, we want, uh, uh, as long as it's not for commercial purposes. Uh, you know, I think that big outlet is probably you know, one really the way uh, uh, to go. Uh, because it, 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 it uh, complies with a lot of uh, uh, what uh, 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 the Berlin paper says and probably even more. And uh, if, uh, just now coming for you, Amrapali, if later on we decide to, uh, uh, to we, we, you know, we decide that, you know, it would be a good thing to contribute to, to, to her uh, paper, that paper that I presented on Big Aulim, where there's a lot of the, the benchmarks, the performance benchmarks, yeah. I think some of those benchmarks, uh, some of those criteria, could be brought into uh, this list of performance here. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that paper lists a lot of other criteria yeah. uh, that could be useful here. Again, it's not in terms of you know trying to bias the the the, the evaluation. 
towards areas where uh, Big Alvin does well. Uh, but you know, I, I think there are some other criteria there that uh, you know could be could be uh, could be useful. Mm -hmm. um, now, so, so before we jump into the statistical control, uh, just a, a final evaluation in relation to the the, the, the the Berlin paper. Again, I think it's absolutely amazing what she did here. I think you know she did a really a great job. My only, uh, you know, observation is that I think this uh, uh, wiki that she put together, it has to be something dynamic. It has to be something that, you know, constantly evolves. And uh, I do, the, the other observation is I don't know, to, even though, like, trust me, I, I, I understand the need to establish some hierarchy in terms of where each one of these, uh, 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 where she's classifying each one of them. I think there, you know, several of these uh, 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 items that she has, it, they could be under multiple uh, super classes. Uh, you know, we mentioned some of them. So anyway, so let me just put it this way: the ontology of her data, uh, her the ontology of her ontology quality classification. Uh, could probably, you know, be tweaked a little bit. Uh, but again, this is a minor detail compared to the to the great work that, you know, she has done. Okay, moving forward. Uh, in terms of statistical control, uh, again, this is a, a, a concept that comes from, I don't know, operations in administration. Uh, and this is really, really basic. Uh, so, you know, some basic measures of, you know, missing values, implausible values. Oh, yeah. So, missing values are just missing. So, you know, what's supposed to be there and it's not. Uh, implausible values are values that are just, you know, playing wrong uh, within the, the, the data. Two comments in relation to missing values and implausible values uh, in relation to ontologies. And this is something that we faced when we tried to implement this project. Uh, the concept of what's missing in terms of ontology is somewhat tricky. Uh, for a relational database, uh, whenever you have a relational database, the concept of missing is, uh, you know, fairly easy to establish. So, for example, you have a variable called age, um, and then, you know, you're supposed to capture that variable from every patient that comes to whatever, a clinic, and then if you don't capture that variable, uh, age is going to be missing. Okay, so that's very straightforward. In an ontology, this is not so straightforward uh, because many of the classes, whenever it comes to say, for example, a document, okay, that you are uh, taking whatever you're uh, 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 tax mining that document so that you can instantiate a, a an ontology. Uh, so the absence of a given instance for a class, you cannot really call that a missing value. It just happens that you know that document does not have an instance for that class. But it doesn't mean that you know the the the, 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 the document is uh, uh, has missing data. Okay. So again, this is just a concept because again, in relational database, especially for certain types of databases. Um, it's fairly easy to define what missing is or, or, or what it's not, uh, but for a lot of uh, uh, ontologies, the concept is not going to be so straightforward. So that's number one. Uh, the second thing that I have there, which is the clustering, uh, this is more of a metric for uh, quality control, and it goes more or less like this. Whenever you have uh, certain uh, uh, variables that might be missing over time, um, they might be missing in association with other variables. This actually relates to some of the work that uh, Luciana is going to be doing with uh, uh, her electronic medical record. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that, uh, and I'll give a, a very bare bones example. Let's say that there's uh, in the Department of Psychiatry where Luciana works, a um, a bad resident, okay? And every time this resident, he fills out a form with the history of uh, 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 the, the a given patient, he fails to add the age of the patient, okay? So if you mine that data, uh, what you're going to find
find is that the name of the resident in the missing data for uh, age for any patient is actually a constant. There's a high degree of association between these two things. So this is what you know, is meant here, uh, that patterns of data quality tend to cluster. Okay? So I just gave you one example of the person who's adding the data and the, the, you know, a given field or a given class that was not being instantiated. There are both other examples. So for example, uh, whenever a, a, I'll, I'll keep using electronic medical records, maybe you know, whenever a patient is seen at night, uh, also in the middle of the night, so early in the morning, uh, the quality of the information is not so good. So you have more missing data because people are tired and they don't want to do the stuff. Maybe uh, during certain seasons of the year, uh, you know, data quality is not going to be so optimal because, you know, there are new uh, staff coming in or there's, you know, whatever other reason, or, or there's a lot of patients and people don't have the time to actually appropriately fill out the, 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 uh, the forms. Uh, in both of these things, missing values, implausible values, you know, they can be tracked over time and in terms of uh, uh, clustering. So that's it. Uh, slide number eight, and we're almost getting to the end now. Uh, it's about the pragmatic um, uh, aspect of data quality. This is very straightforward. This actually came from the, the op one ontology engineering methodology. And it has primarily three things, uh, fidelity, relevance, and completeness. Um, now, fidelity is about, you know, are the claims uh, made by the ontology true uh, in the target domain, okay? So are the relationships that, you know, you are, um, you are uh, uh, making in the ontology itself, are they true in relation to the domain? And this is something uh, that, you know, is very, very good from the perspective of OP1, because OP1 emphasizes all the time, you know, nonstop, about the, the, the relation between the content, uh, sorry, the domain expert, expert and the, 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 the knowledge engineer, okay? So the relation between the two. So if there's a close work, close relationship with the, 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 uh, the domain expert, usually, you know, the fidelity is going to be present, um, at least to, to an extent. Number two, relevance. Uh, so it has the impl implementation of the ontology requirements being done in an appropriate way. Uh, so does it cover the application domain? Uh, in other words, you know, are the uh, you know are the appropriate uh, questions being uh, uh, answered? So the competency, competency question. So in my opinion, uh, you know, from a content perspective, this is probably one of the most important things in terms of ontology. If your ontology is not answering the competency question, uh, it's basically not uh, fulfilling the role that it's supposed to fulfill, period. Uh, you know, it might be a nice computational exercise, but it's, it's not doing any good. And then finally, in terms of pragmatic, is it complete? So completeness. Uh, so does it satisfy the uh, requirements and constraints of the problem it was meant to, uh, to solve? Um, then finally, uh, from a social perspective, oh, actually there are two more. So from a social perspective, uh, this also comes from up one. So how popular is the database? So you know how many you know ontologies actually link uh, to that ontology? I think that there was one point within the Bernie paper that talked about you know external links. Uh, and uh, but then the other thing that I don't think they cover is number of times ontology is accessed. So you know, are people actually using this? It was very interesting yesterday. Uh, you know, during the conversation with the, the CRI group, they asked asked me several times how often you know uh, uh, Link City is used. Uh, and I know it's been used a lot, but I don't know if there is a count somewhere. Uh, you know, telling us how many uh, people are accessing the Sparkle endpoint. Uh, one thing that I can tell almost for sure is that within the biomedical research community, 
probably not a people not not a lot of people are using that because it's still something relatively uh, new. Then the final thing, final characteristic is reuse. Uh, reuse uh, uh, links very much with the issue of reproducibility. Uh, reproducibility was the main topic, as I mentioned before, uh, for the, the DVN proposal. If you don't have that proposal, just drop me an email or to the team and just ask him to give you access. Uh, it's a very interesting proposal. Uh, the oncology section was written by the Harvard group. I'm actually the, the principal investigator, but you know, oncology uh, was driven by them. Uh, and um, again, if I were to, uh, uh, you know, add more, uh, there's far more stuff in relation to reuse that could be uh, could be cited here. Again, this reuse came from the research object paper. Uh, I put the link in the, the, the heading here. Uh, and basically, she talks about reuse, repurpose, uh, repeatability, uh, if you can replay, if you can re uh, reference, if you can review. She defines each one, of, each one of these things, but it primarily comes down to the point of uh, um, you know, just being able to verify uh, that you can reuse the, 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 the data appropriately, if you can repurpose, so you know, use the data instead of one objective to another, uh, if you can do repeated things uh, with the data, um, I think I circulated, I might have circulated this to Luciana at some point. There have been some uh, publications uh, in, in some really, really top journals in biomedical research saying uh, that they try to reproduce um, the analysis performed in multiple top journals and they were unable to. So if you cannot repeat the analysis done uh, in a given uh, data set, that's really bad. Really, 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 really bad. Uh, same thing in terms of replay. So if you cannot trace the history of the database, that's also terrible. Uh, there's one very famous uh, uh, um, trial in psychiatry that, you know, actually uh, related to one investigator who's now in Singapore, uh, where now they're having a lot of problems because you know a lot of the they, they under NIH, uh, you know every time you get NIH funding from uh, 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 for a given study, you have actually to publish your data. At this point, they don't require your RTF for the data, but you have to publish the data, and the data is pu uh, placed in a public domain. Uh, but then, you know, they, 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 they released this, uh, the, the, the data for this very large psychiatry trial. Uh, and a lot of people actually, you know, reusing the data, they cannot reproduce their results at all. Again, I'm, not, I'm talking about, you know, not even get, getting close. And uh, rumors are that the researchers themselves cannot uh, reproduce the, the data. I don't know whether that's true or not, uh, but that's really bad. So again, you know, create, creating references and allowing for discoverability, so in other words, review. Uh, again, there's probably far more that could be uh, uh, done here, uh, but uh, uh, you know, I think these are great principles. And then finally, you know, open issues. Uh, open issues meaning things that, you know, have not been addressed yet. I think this one came from, yeah, this one came from the, uh, the research object paper. Uh, then, you know, the, the, the author mentioned uh, things like, you know, credit, attribution, and reward. This is so essential. This is so essential. If we want, um, uh, you know, people to publish more of their data, uh, they have to be, you know, credit has to be there. And more important, credit has to be uh, annotated in the ontology itself. Okay? So that's part of the, 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 the history of the ontology. Um, this is absolutely essential. Uh, actually, this uh, Harvard grant proposal uh, actually talks about credit. I think it talks about, it definitely has credit in the proposal. I don't know if we were able to keep it uh, in, by the very end, because you know, we were trying to get it down to 12 pages. But it has a lot of things there in relation to credit. Uh, I'm just not sure if that got into the ontology. Uh, trustworthiness and quality, there's a lot of things in terms of trustworthiness. 
Uh, so who are these people? When was it published? Uh, you know, maybe at some point even are there digital signatures associated with the data? Uh, so who's doing this? Are there uh, are there audit trails? So, for example, if you take a, uh, an electronic database like uh, Dado's Perspective, it has an audit trail. But guess what? Whenever we export the data, the audit trail does not come uh, uh, along. It could, uh, but you know, we just don't have an ontology behind uh, 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 Dado's Perspective allowing it to be uh, 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 to carry all of that information. Uh, encapsulation and versioning. So. Again, all, all, all of these things that are absolutely essential but have, have not been addressed yet. Again, I kept talking like a crazy man because nobody interrupted me, so... But uh, are there any other comments? <laughs> Okay. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.